So we did our research. Um, you know, we were really early adopters, so we, we, we really had to take a bit of a leap of faith. Um, you, you don't have to do that as much. There's a lot of people for you to talk to who have had tremendous success. I'm encouraged the fact that there are a lot of people here today that already have a little stuff. I'm as excited to talk to you about what you're doing. Um, and I'm certainly happy to share what we're doing as well. And we'll share a little bit of that today. And we'll have some Q&A time. Um, but first and foremost, you know, we've had, we've had our Mona Lisa for basically a year and a half. Uh, in that time frame, we've done over 200 cases. And we've had, obviously, all of you are doing the math right now. We have had 100% plus return on our investment. And, and from, from my perspective as a practice manager, there is nothing else that I could make this capital investment in that can have this return on investment in this short of time. I can hire another provider, um, but that's a, that's a three-year commitment, hoping that I'm gonna increase my, my patient volume to even cover that provider's cost. Um, I can hire a mid-level with a little less cost up front, but again, there's a lot of other variables involved that determine whether or not I'm gonna make that type of ROI. So from a financial perspective, this has really been a win-win for us. Um, first and foremost, you have to market from within your practice. Um, I speak to a lot of practices about, so we also have an aesthetic spot, and I talk to a lot of other practices about marketing and, and you know, is this the right laser for our practice? And, and, um, I, I'll tell you the same thing I tell everybody, that is, None of these, including the Mona Lisa, is a buy it and they will come. You have to proactively uh, work toward making a success. You'll do well. You'll, if you did nothing and just talk to every patient at their annual, you'll still likely pay for it. But if you want more out of it than that, then you have to take a little more of an aggressive approach to it. Um, so when I say market from within your practice, you do what we did. The first thing I suggest you do is if you don't know how to do it already, find somebody in your practice who does, but Monday morning, sit down, start up your, your EMR, and, and print off a list of every patient in your practice who's presently on Vagifem, Estrase, or Osfina. And you wanna absolutely target those patients. Whether you have someone in your practice that's calling those patients and scheduling uh, consults with them, or you're doing a direct marketing campaign that you, you put together, um, an e-blast, which is very cost effective, or something in print that you're mailing to them. Um, we'll talk a little bit about this later, but the beauty of it is Sunshare has already created all of that for you. You don't have to invest in the cost of those materials. All you do is you have to have them personalized and you're gonna pay for the postage. So first and foremost, within your practice, you're gonna to wanna to have displays in your practice. Um, there's, you, you have patients that are, that are captively waiting for you in your rooms. I don't know how your rooms are set up. Ours have computer screens. Those com computer screens are cycling through information that we want them to see. Um, they're in our lobby waiting to go back. We have a television screen in the lobby that's, again, cycling through. There's a video on Mona Lisa that's playing in there. Um, when they're in checkout, I'll show you a picture. There's a, there's a large infographic on the wall where they're sitting at checkout. Um, spend some time. We have mid-levels in our practice, if you have mid-levels. Train your mid-levels, train them on you know, how to approach patients, how to look for the right candidate, you know, who are the best candidates. So again, start within your practice. Like Carmen said, we really fully expected going into this that um, that, that would be the only patients that we would have for moments would be from within our practice. Um, we, started, we started doing open houses about six months in, and then quickly what we found, the first time I sat down and analyzed patients that we have from Mona Lisa, we found that half of our Mona Lisa patients were from outside of our practice. And that was huge for us. Because then we looked at those 50%, those 10% of them had came to our practice, switched practices. And so as a, for an OBGYN, I was, patients are extremely loyal to their OBGYN. They're hairdressers and their, and their OBGYN. They don't switch OBGYNs unless there's a major problem or their doctor retired. Women just don't typically shop for a new OBGYN. So we really have limited opportunities to capture new patients. Uh, we, have, we have new people moving to our area or 
There's a few other variables, but for the most part, we have very limited opportunities to capture new patients. This was a huge opportunity for us to capture new patients. So again, kind of unexpected, but it was a, it was a huge plus for us. Outside of, of your own patient base, which is really fairly cost effective to reach those patients, um, you should have, if you don't have their emails, if you're not collecting emails now, you need to start collecting emails. Um, you need to be verifying that every patient that comes in every single day for every appointment, you need to have your staff verifying that you have a correct email address. And then utilize those emails. It's very simple to do. There's software that makes it very easy. Um, if you don't want to take the time to figure it out, hire somebody to do it. Um, the return for your investment is, um, is exceptional. Um, but outside of your own practice, you need to understand the power of social media. So in 2004, when this practice began, I was still generally under the, under the, uh, the perception that if you had to market your medical practice, you were probably doing something wrong. Um, generally, it was all word of mouth. And that is, there's been a fundamental shift in the last 10 years, and definitely in the last five years. Um, we track every incoming patient to our practice and every outgoing patient to our practice. We know exactly why everyone's leaving and we know exactly who's coming to our practice. And we analyze that data every single month. And we are seeing a shift where it used to be it was 95% of everybody came in my, my sister told me about you, my girlfriend goes here, this is where my mom went. There's always some direct uh, social contact. Now it's more and more, it's a, I saw you're out on Facebook, I saw something on Instagram. When somebody comes to the area now, I mean, what's the first thing? If, if, I want, if I'm in Novi, if I need a plumber in Novi, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my phone and I'm gonna Google search Novi and plumber. Women are doing the exact same thing to find an OBGYN or any other aesthetic service. Where and what I want, that's what they're gonna Google search. And if you're not capturing that, you are missing out on a massive opportunity. So, presently, for our practice, both the medical practice and the aesthetics practice, 95% um, of all of our marketing is Facebook and Instagram. I don't do Snapchat, because I hate Snapchat. Um, and, and quite honestly, two, those two platforms are more than enough, so I focus on those two platforms. There are other things you can do. Um, there are other things that I consider social marketing, uh, realself.com. I absolutely recommend that you, uh, that you work with RealSelf. Um, but, all right, here's the good thought. So, but we're talking about Mona Lisa. You cannot ignore traditional marketing for Mona Lisa. Because the fact is, um, the demographic, the primary demographic for Mona Lisa still reads the newspaper. Hair removal, I don't put hair removal ads in the newspaper. Um, but Mona Lisa ads, we definitely put Mona Lisa ads in the newspaper. Um, let's look at a couple, let's cycle through a couple of these. In front of you now, you have, everyone should have this. I gave you a couple examples. There's three examples here. So, a couple marketing examples. Uh, this is the this is the infographic I studied about. This is our this is one of our checkout rooms. So this infographic is is on the wall. This is it. this. The beauty of this is I didn't have to pay to create this. Sinusure created this. All I had to do was make it. Um, if anybody in here has done any level of marketing. One thing you quickly realize is the biggest expense is the creation of it. Whether you're doing commercials or some type of, uh, um, if you're doing a mailer, okay? A mailer might be, all in all, from creation to delivery, you might be looking at 35, 40 cents a piece. A, a big part of that cost is the creation of that mailer. Paying somebody to create that graphic, not just the postage. So this is one example. I didn't wear my glasses, so. 
think you have this one. This is, uh, this is an example of, uh, this was an e-blast that we set up for an open house. Very simple. We e-blast to our patients. We also buy email lists. So there are, there are yeah, I won't tell you who to put, there are, just Google search it. There are all kinds of companies who will give you um, databases. You, you, know, you want a reputable company. If you want to know who we use, I'll, I'll send you, I can I happily email you uh, the name. But, so we have a database that's just women uh, within 50 miles of us over the age of 50. And we, you know, I think we have 20,000 emails in that list alone. So again, I, I, that has a lot to do with the fact of why uh, over half of our normal of patients were um, from outside of our practice. If that's your goal, then you definitely need to do this. Uh, this is a patient brochure. Again, I'm showing you this because again, we didn't create this science for you. This the AMPS program is exceptional. They have everything you need from social media marketing pieces to um, to everything you need to create a, a very professional looking e-blast. They have um, posters. It's all there. Print ads, various sizes, everything there. And then they will customize. If you don't know how to do this, it, it's simple to do. You can do it yourself. But if you don't want to, um, somebody at Science Show would happily do it for you. Just send them your logo. They'll put it on there for you. And then you just have the cost of printing those. And I usually include 500 customized patient brochures. Whoever buys from these are right through this one. Uh, this is, I think you might have this example. This is an advertorial that we have with, uh, with, with what advertorials are. Um, we, do a, we do a special in October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's the only time we offer a discount on Mona Lisa. Our pricing for Mona Lisa is $1,800 for three treatments. Um, we require payment in full for all three treatments before your first treatment. Now, from a, obviously, I love that uh, from a financial perspective, but there's also a clinical reason for that, for compliance. So many of your patients are gonna have a, a, a good result from their first treatment. You wanna make sure they're gonna keep coming back for their second and third. So we encourage you, not just because it's a good financial decision, it's good for your patients. Make sure they pay up front uh, for all three. Mm -hmm. This is a full print ad that we did. This was a newspaper ad that we did. Um, and again, well, we do special pricing for breast cancer survivors. So if you're a breast cancer survivor, we, um, the price is $1,500. It's a small discount. You don't ask for proof or anything. If you come in and tell us you're a breast cancer survivor, you're gonna get our discounted price. I'm backing that one. I wanna, can I just kill this one? Yep. Um, the last one I'll show you is the, this is referring physician's information. This is a large file, but uh, Sinusure has created this. We sent this out to our entire referral physician base. Um, and don't ignore the opportunity there. The, the family physicians, general practitioners in your area are a great source. Um, but again, I mean, I've been working with, with physicians uh, my entire professional life. They, Doctors do hate talking to patients about something that they don't understand. So you have to take a little bit of time. You might want to even um, spend some time visiting them. Set up a lunch, um, sit down, talk to them, explain to them what this is, because this is gonna be new to them, and they're gonna be reluctant to talk to their patients about it, unless they really feel like they grasp what it is. So um, you're gonna have to take a little bit of time, but you're probably already working with those docs anyway. I mean, they're your referral physicians, so you, you, know, if you have a good rapport with them. Call them up, just call them, say I sent you some information, did you see it, do you have any questions? Maybe give them a quick rundown. Um, if they're candidates, give them a free treatment. Mm -hmm. And we'll pay for the referral lunches too, Sanitary will pay for that. So we can just right, get lunch delivered to your office, to their office, and it'll look like it's coming from you instead of us. But again, so this question is only available for OBGYN. Yeah, OBGYN, urogynecologist, yeah. and urologist. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, let's look at, um, I'll show you on our website. This is our website. Um, if you go to our website and you go to, just to show you what, what we're doing, and here's Mona Lisa. Um, how many, who has a website? They wouldn't have a website for their practice. Uh, you're actively marketing your website. Do you use your website as a tool? A website is no longer just an electronic brochure. You need to have a current website with data that is actively set up to drive patients to your practice. Um, don't underestimate it. It's way more than an electronic brochure. So this is what we have uh, for Mona Lisa. Um, you, you, you come onto our website, There's a, you have a video explaining what it is, uh, some FAQs, and then always the website always has to end in some type of way for that patient to then come in contact with you. It's a quick form at the bottom, their name, their, their contact number, their email, and click send, ends up in my inbox. We contact them and set up an appointment. Very, very easy. If you can't do it, there are uh, lots of people who can. Lori Werner is one of them. And she's happy to show you how to do it or do it for you. Um, now, let's, let's go to the Facebook page. Let's show that. This is our, um, we have two locations, Finley Women's Care and Tiffany Women's Care. This is our, they mirror each other for the most part, but this is our women's care um, page. What I want to show you is, let's just look at the insights here. So we do a lot of, a lot of marketing on social media. Um, this is what we've been doing. This is a page summary of the last um, seven days. Actions, page views, page likes. Um, what I want to focus on, though, is let me show you a Mona Lisa ad. Over here, what you're seeing is uh, results. These are the, the thousands of people. So this is the one that I want to show you. This is an ad that we ran. The reason this is important, I want to show you the, the power of social media versus more traditional marketing. Um, we tested the waters for a cable advertising just recently. I spent $2,500 to, to run this exact same commercial on cable network, um, on HGTV, Lifetime, several others. Plus, I had to spend a little bit of money to do a little bit of editing and prep the work. So, all in under 3,000. Again, I told you earlier, we track everything in our practice. Because I want to know what's working, what isn't working. I didn't get a single phone call from Lisa least a touch from that commercial. Not one, but I read this commercial and let's just show you. Recently, a friend asked me if I still enjoyed being intimate. And the truth was, I didn't. I was so unhappy. So I looked into it and found a solution that changed my life. Mona Lisa Touch is a safe, clinically proven therapy that addresses the painful symptoms of menopause because I deserve to feel like myself again. So do you. Okay, the reason why this is effective, if you're watching this on cable television, you know, oh, that's really interesting. The ownership still is, is on that, that potential patient to then take action, to get up, either pick up their phone or um, get on their laptop or call us or email us. The reality is, is most people don't function that way. If they can't immediately click on something that puts them in touch with you, the chances of it happening are exponentially less. The reason this works is because right under that ad, and you saw we've had, it, it, I spent $750 on this ad, and I, and I marketed very specific where I wanted that ad to go. That, like the commercial on television, I don't know who watched that. A bunch of men could have watched that. I mean, men watch HGTV. A bunch of people who I don't know, just like billboards. Billboards is like a shotgun blast in advertising. It's just peppering everybody who drives by. You might get lucky. Somebody who is a good candidate might see it. 
Social media is absolute laser targeted marketing. So it's not just something where you're putting something out on Facebook or Instagram and you're hoping that the right people see it. You're telling it to take it to the right people. So when I put this ad on, I'm saying, I only want this ad to show up on pages of women from this age to this age. And I can even put in certain, if I've determined, well, I don't know, um, if there's certain things that they like. Like when we run ads for lipo or sculpture, things like that, you know, we target people who are into fitness and yoga or, or people who like um, Dr. Oz. You know, it, it, th these are people who, who are gonna have more interest in what we do. So it's, it's hyper-focused, laser-targeted marketing. And in this particular ad, we had massive response to this. Because not only are they watching that, that video commercial, as soon as it's done, right underneath it is a link that takes them either directly to our website where they can find out more information, or they push this button, and next thing you know, they're talking to us, or they're coming and sending us a, a, a quick email message saying, I want more information. Now I have their demographic. I have their contact information now. At that point, I have their name, I've got their email. Now the ball's in my court. See what I mean? I'm not just waiting for them to come to us in the long run. So, the, I wanted to just give you a little idea of some of the marketing that we're doing that we've found effective. Mona Lisa brings in and of itself its own challenge with this type of marketing, especially on Facebook. Um, we've a lot of trial and error with Facebook. I always imagine there's, there's some uh, computer geek in Pasadena, California who is who is uh, looking at every ad that I try to post, and as soon as he sees the word vagina, he closes. Oh no, you can't! You can't talk about vaginas on Facebook. <laughs> so um, you have to be very careful. You'll learn. Um, I'd be happy to tell you what will work, what won't work. Lori can help you with that as well. Um, there's certain things you just have to be careful. You, you you can't give any indication if you're talking about something that's for an improvement of sexual function. You might have to. You might find yourself in a. You might have to have some conversations with Facebook explain what it is that you're really trying to advertise. But uh, the point is, is it, it's a quick learning curve. Um, you can't overcome it. You can be very effective with it. Um, you just need to be careful about how you're advertising it. So I, I encourage you, reach out to Lori or somebody like Lori because um, this is a growing field. People like Lori who have um, a lot of experience working in the medical field, working with offices like ours, and knowing how to translate um, and, or use the, uh, tools like, like Facebook and Instagram to, to bring patients to us. So I can stay here. I'm gonna introduce Lori Werner. Uh, I'm happy to stay here if you have more questions for me, but in the meantime, I think Lori has more gracious here as well. Okay. Dennis, that was phenomenal. He um, is going to make my presentation go by really fast because you covered so much of what I was going to go over. Sorry. I could not agree with you more. Um, and it is absolutely crazy to me how many offices aren't using Facebook and aren't using email. Two things that are 100% free, that are measurable, that are highly, highly targeted. Um, so, and that's, that's really what I do. So just to tell you guys super quick about me, some of you guys recognize me. I'm your former NovaShirt and MyoShirt rep here in Detroit. Um, prior to that, I was an Actinel rep, so I sold osteoporosis medicine. Um, I've worked in the OBGYN space for 15 years. I also own my own health coaching business, which I grew 100% online, up to 5,000 clients, all through social media marketing and email marketing. And so, Medical Marketing Wiz is kind of the culmination of my two worlds coming together when I got sick of being in the OR, and dealing with nurses that still, after three years, can't figure out how to use a fluid management machine and missing my daughter's student of the month assembly, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go into business for myself, I'm gonna take all these skills that I have, and I'm gonna help physicians do what you don't have time to do, you don't have people in the office that necessarily have the skills to do, um, but also realizing, like, a lot of you guys don't need a full-time marketing person, you just need somebody that can kind of maybe give you a bolus um, when you when you uh, get a new technology like this. So Kathy and I met up and we have just gone crazy with um, helping, helping offices with Mona Lisa. I'm gonna give you guys a few more examples of um, some, of the, some of the things that we do. 
I'm gonna skip through these. You guys know that your, your um, patients are definitely online. Your website is the first thing that your patients are going to see. They're gonna see your online reputation before they talk to somebody on the phone and before they see your waiting room and before they meet you. So your website needs to be up to date. I see people's websites, you know, oh yeah, I have a website. Yeah, your website was from 2011. It's not mobile friendly. There's no email opt-in. You know, you want people to be able to go to your website, click on your website, it will give you directions on exactly how to get to your office. You want your website to be able to capture email addresses. Um, so I'm gonna just super quick touch on that. The social media, I'm just gonna skip. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of examples. Again, the Facebook ads that we've run. Um, I'll show you what type of email blast we do. And then I'm gonna talk real quick about how to do events in your office. Um, I've been at offices where their event is a complete and total failure. I've been at offices where we have 50 people. Um, I have one doctor here locally. We've done two events. He had over 50 people at each event. He had over 20 people put $1,800 down at the event to get their Mona Lisa. He, you know, you do a few events, you can pay for your Mona Lisa and like two or three good, well-advertised events. And then how to get um, referrals from um, your patients and from physicians. So again, make sure also your website has the right meta tags. Like Dennis said, you want, and I would challenge all of you guys, if you do homework right now, go home and Google Novi Michigan OBGYN or Waterford, wherever you guys are from, and see whose name comes up. If you are not in the top three people, you need to focus um, on, your, um, on your Google ranking. Um, make sure your website has a link to your social media page and that there's a way to um, opt in. And then also, I have blogging here. Blogging is a way to raise your Google search ranking for free um, without having to pay for a bunch of ads. This just shows you guys real quick um, what happens when somebody comes, um, Googles you. The one thing I wanna point out here, if you Google yourself and you see this, own this business, you are not in control of your Google page. It's super easy to do. You just get a code from Google. You claim your page. This is gonna allow you to get all the analytics on your website. It's also gonna allow you to respond to negative reviews um, because you can't take down a negative review, but you can respond to them. Um, and just make sure that you're asking your patients, your satisfied patients, to go on Google and give you a quick little you know, five-star rating. I have one doctor, they have a little thing in their office that says like, review us on Google and lunch is on us. If they show the Google review, they get a $5 gift card to Subway. It's a great way to boost your um, Google rankings. And that's gonna be important because you guys, you can spend tons of money on marketing. The first thing the person's gonna do is Google you. And if you do not have good reviews, you're undoing all of the money that you're investing in your marketing. This I want to put on here because a lot of people think that, oh, my Mona Lisa patient isn't on Facebook. Yes, they are. The fastest growing demographic of people on Facebook are that exact age of people. So 50 to 60, um, four year olds, 72% of them are on Facebook. 62% of people over the age of 65 are on Facebook. That's how they're finding their like, significant other now, right? They're like <laughs> on Facebook. Um, so I think you can use Facebook for so many things. It, it, when you look at your waiting room, they're not reading the magazines you have out there, they're all sitting there just scrolling through their newsfeed. You put them in the exam room, they're scrolling through the newsfeed. If you aren't engaging with your patients um, and just providing relevant content to them, it's a missed opportunity. Um, so this is my so social media strategy. You have to post content daily. Now the awesome thing, is when you have a business page on Facebook, you can schedule that content in advance. So you can sit down on May 1st, you're having a glass of wine, watching uh, Scandal, and you're creating your content. I just go to sites like ACOG, NAMS, um, Contemporary OBGYN, grab content. I put together a strategy like Monday is Mona Lisa Monday. So there's always gonna be a post about Mona Lisa on Monday or maybe menopause Monday or maternity Monday, whatever you want to call it. Tasty Tuesday, put recipes. People love recipes. It keeps your page active. The other reason that you want to do this every single day is Facebook will demote your page if you don't have an active page. 
So if you're posting like once a month on Facebook, you might as well not be posting at all because they're gonna devalue your page and not show your content to as many people. Um, the other thing, and Dennis showed this perfectly, highly targeted. To give you guys an example, for $100, you can reach between 11,000 and 15,000 highly targeted patients in your market. So for Mona Lisa, what I run is I run an ad between the ages of 45 and 65 who live in a house that is valued at more than $200,000 and who live within 15 miles of your office. Mm -hmm. Facebook knows all of that and will show that, that video that Dennis, and I use the exact same video that he showed, it will show that right in between their friends, grandkids, pictures, and everything else that they're scrolling at. Video is king. If you're gonna um, use Facebook for advertising, use video. They're gonna show it to a lot more people. This is a couple of examples um, of how awesome this is, okay? This is a doctor that I market for. She has a laser hair removal in her office. She's an OBGYN physician. I paid $50 for this ad. I got 88 people to claim that offer. And what's so awesome about that is when they, when this is going through their their news feed, it, they'll say like, okay, 50% off laser hair removal. They click on it, it automatically emails that person the offer. And then it automatically emails them a couple days later if they haven't claimed the offer. So it's an automated thing that Facebook does for you. Um, the second one you'll see, this is the Mona Lisa one. My ad, first one, this was again, a $50 ad. 2,694 people watched that video. 1,965, that ad performed 95% better than any other comparable ad that Facebook is comparing it to. So it's really awesome. You can advertise your seminars. So here's a seminar that we did, Restoring Your Romance After Menopause. We had, actually had 50 people come to that event. I used email marketing and Facebook to advertise it. And then again, um, the Facebook video, or the Mona Lisa video. Um, email blasts. Just out of curiosity, how many of you guys collect email addresses? Okay, that's great. I have a lot of offices that they don't collect email addresses and it like makes me have hives like just thinking about it because email is free and doctors have the number two open rate of any email that's sent out. If you get an email from your doctor, you're gonna open it. It's not like a spammy type of email that people get. <laughs> Create content that is informative. You know, don't use it as a commercial. Use it as an educational tool for your patients. You know, you can write about pelvic organ prolapse or, you know, the Zika virus or whatever you want your patients to be aware of. And then you just put a little blurb like, oh, by the way, you know, our office has this, you know, we're the first office in the area to offer Mona Lisa Touch technology. Um, you can advertise your events in there. You're gonna have a link to your Facebook page. You're gonna have a link to your Google reviews, all in your email, and it's free. Um, you can use a soft, one piece of software that's free. It's called MailChimp. Um, you can send up to 2,000 emails for free with MailChimp. Um, I use one because I send out mass emails. I've got about 60,000 emails. I use one that costs me 50 bucks a month. Um, but a really powerful tool. If you do nothing after leaving this today, please make sure Monday you start collecting patient email addresses. This is just another example of a email blast. And what's really cool is what you'll see down here, this is in the email, they click reserve your spot, it goes to a landing page, the patient has to provide their name, email, and phone number. Now I know they're interested in the, the event, even if they don't show up, I know to call them to follow up or to invite them to the next time we have an event. Speaking of events, um, you can pay off your Mona Lisa in about 80 procedures, do three to four events, your laser's paid off. Um, this is, um, these are two different events, like who wouldn't love to have that many people in my waiting room for a little seminar? The other thing I'll tell you, don't do like an open housey kind of thing. They don't work. Um, the lady that's coming to hear about sculpture isn't always the lady that's gonna care about Mona Lisa. So you're better off doing like a, a 20 minute little lecture. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on food. I make like little goodie bags with like some chocolates and stuff and they, they love that. Um, but just, just do a quick little lecture and show like um, maybe 
six or seven slides about Mona Lisa, show a patient testimonial, show the Mickey Cram, not the one they showed here, but the, there's another short Mickey Cram video. It's awesome. Patients will, will sign up. Um, West Village OBGYN in the house over here. In the house. So this is them over here. I hooked them up with a women's seminar um, in Dearborn. They had like a booth at it to showcase their services. Um, and then this is just an example of one of the flyers that we use for um, Mona Lisa. This one, okay, another idea, nurse practitioners, okay? In Michigan, I did this until, actually, I think Dr. Doty, you spoke at one that I did in Toledo um, way back when I was selling Novasher. The, these nurse practitioner groups, they have meetings. So this one here, this is um, one of my clients. I helped him up, he spoke at the Michigan Nurse Practitioners Association. We had like 50 nurse practitioners. They got the people there, so it wasn't stressful. Their potential referrals and potential patients for Mona Lisa and a lot of your other services too. So, and then I was excited. I got my text. You know, Lori, you're a powerhouse. So I was like, yeah. um, other things: sponsoring walks. Okay, breast cancer walk. Um, one of the things we did with West Village OBGYN just um, actually this morning they had a race in Dearborn. 150 bucks. You get your little brochure in the race bag of every single, every single runner. Um, so the breast cancer walks would be great for that. For your OB patients, March of Dimes walks. Um, the Michigan Nurse Red Hat Society, like everybody knows that Red Hat group, they're all like Mona Lisa patients. So see if you can come and like <laughs> do something at that Red Hat. Um, Junior League is another really um, good one. Dennis touched on this, newspaper, magazines, yes, definitely that type of patient is gonna be in um, still reading magazines, do an article. Don't buy a newspaper. If you just buy a newspaper ad, you're wasting your money. Do some kind of educational article. Some of the, my husband and I used to own a newspaper. We loved it when people would send us articles because I didn't have to pay a writer to go sit at a you know, school board meeting for three hours to come up with an article. So they welcome as long as it's not super salesy, it's educational, um, they'll totally go for it. Um, referrals, so this is one of the things I do locally. Um, I create a referral pad for every one of my clients. You'll see over here, um, I said, okay, well, what, what would be all the things that people would refer to you for? And particularly for the age demographic of Mona Lisa, I used to sell MyoSure, so we, had a lot of postmenopausal patients for MyoSure. Um, a lot of those women, like maybe they don't really go to the gynecologist anymore and they're going to their primary care doctor who has somebody that's doing a pap smear there. Maybe her ob is retired at this point. So we want that referring physician to think of you when that lady presents with postmenopausal bleeding and needs a polypectomy. Or we want her to think of you if she complains of vaginal atrophy that they know that your office has it. So we create these little um, referral pads for them. And then I make a little goodie bag with like the brochures and some chocolates and stuff. And we take them around um, to each provider. The key is make the goodie bags, just a little secret. Get the clear bags, put them in there, put the chocolate, tape it shut. So if they want the chocolate, they gotta read what's in it. <laughs> so. Um, so again, like I really believe online, your key, you've got five key points to successfully marketing your practice. And that goes whether you're doing Mona Lisa or you're doing other things. You gotta have an updated website and needs to have an email opt-in and it has to be mobile friendly. You have to be using social media. Um, you gotta be collecting emails. Don't be afraid to do a couple of events and make sure that your referrals know who you are. Um, and just to let you guys know a little bit about my relationship with Kathy and, um, and Hologic. <laughs> I worked for Hologic for six years. Hey, Dawn, in the back there. <laughs> um, but uh, Kathy and I have partnered up, and anybody that purchases a Mona Lisa machine does get three months where you'll be able to personally work with me and do all of your marketing at, at no charge to give you guys a bolus. And then one of the things that I do offer too, I don't make anybody sign a contract, but um, some offices, maybe you have somebody in the office that you think would be really good at it, um, at this stuff, but they just don't know where to get started. I can even just come in and do a training and I can teach them exactly how to do this. So, um, so that's kind of 
kind of what I do, and it's just been awesome working with Kathy and the Sign Assure people and some of my clients that are here, Dr. Hannah. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you guys um, have any additional questions or you want to know the nitty gritty behind this stuff. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. If anyone has any particular questions, I want Lisa. You know, Scott's going to be here the rest of the weekend, um, and I'm going to be here as well. So.